We are The Table, and we are so glad that you have taken time out of your week to join us. Here at The Table, it is our hope to move you forward in life and faith over the course of this message. At The Table, we do things just a bit differently. We pose questions in real time, and we want to give you some time to wrestle with those questions as well. Again, thanks for joining us, and we hope that this message moves you forward. You can celebrate. That's good. Don't be ashamed. This is good. Church, you're amazing. You can have a seat this morning. Oh, it's good to be with you. My name is Brad, and I'm one of the pastors here at the table. Uh, If it is your first time here, man, we're glad you're here this Sunday, but I just want to let you know you missed last Sunday. Holy cow. It was, anybody have a good time? I had an amazing time. Uh, I don't, it was just great to be outside. It was fun to watch all of you try to kick field goals while eating hot dogs and standing next to a campfire. Can I just say, we smelled like a rotten bunch when we came into worship on Sunday. I smelled like smoke the rest of the week. It was, it was just a great time. Uh, glad you could be part of it. Uh, in fact, that's what I want to talk about today, is that we celebrate. And, and we're starting this new series uh, today uh, called We. And I, I know some of you hear the title We, and, and immediately uh, we may lose you. And, and here's why. Um, So let me give you a little secret. Uh, Tips of what they teach you in school on how to preach. Some of you are like, you went to school to preach? (laughs) Come on, give me a break. Give me a break. Here we go. So so one of the tips in school is that they want to make sure that you don't single people out. uh, So we don't call out names here. Uh, But also we want to make you, we have to make you feel like it's inclusive, that we're including everybody. And so they teach you that when you preach, you use the word we. Now, here's what I've learned um, outside of school in preaching is that you actually don't want me to preach about we, you want me to preach about you. And, and, and when I preach about you, uh, you stay with us, you stay connected. But when I start preaching about we, uh, you get lost in transition. And here's why, because when we say we, you think that we're preaching to everybody else, but you, are you with me on this? Like, let me give you a quick example. In our staff, if I say, this is hypothetical. We need to take out the trash. If I say we need to take out the trash, um, what they hear is, Brad, that's a great idea. You should take out the trash. And in my brain, I'm saying, yes, you should take out the trash. And guess what? The trash never gets taken out because it's, it's lost in the translation of we. And, and so what I've learned is that if I can connect with you and I can preach to you, uh, we can't have we without you. But here's what I also know, is you can't have your true self and your true identity without us. You see, God has created you and he has made you uh, for relationship and for connection. And what I know is that we are going through a time, uh, we sometimes will say we're going through a season. Um, The season's been like three years. We know what we all mean by that. Uh, We have gone through a season where I believe we've lost proximity to people. And what we know is that proximity to people shapes our behavior and who we are. In fact, there are people you look up to and you surround yourself with those people and you become like them and you behave like them because of proximity. And without proximity, what I know is we become disconnected from reality. We become disconnected in the relationships around us and we feel like we're stuck. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody today. You've come today and you feel stuck in your life. You feel stuck where you are. And you're like, I'm ready to get out of this. And so I I wanna be clear. We were starting a new series today called We. And I wanna be clear about what I'm talking about when I talk about we. If I say community, if I say gathering, what I'm talking about when I talk about we is the church. Just replace it. If I say we, I mean the church. If I say community, I mean the church. If I say gathering, I'm talking about the church. We have the Big C Church, which is churches all over the world that are gathering. And then we have the local church, which is us. We have the table. 
And, and so today, I, I want to talk about what is it that we do as a church. And so uh, it's going to be a little bit weird. Hey, listen, first time, we're not trying to weird you out. We don't do this every single week. But because we're preaching and we're talking about something that's important to us, uh, I'm going to have you do this with us today. And so uh, one thing we do with our staff is we cover our mission and our values every staff meeting. And so today, I want you to say this with me because it's so important, right? Right, here we go. At the table, our mission is to, say it with me, guide people into a forward-moving relationship with Jesus, right? And I love this idea of forward-moving because because some of us um, don't get it. Faith is not like inertia. Faith doesn't stay in motion because you set it in motion. A lot of times it gets stuck. And so we want you to continue moving forward. And so how do we do that? I want to talk about that. How do we move forward in our relationship and in our faith and in our life? And so over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about, and here's our values. You ready? I want you to say these with me. This is what we value as a church. It's so simple, but yet we do, we do these three things to move us forward. Here they are. Say it with me. We celebrate, we move forward, and we get out. I'm not convinced that you're you're here today. Let's say these together really loud. Come, because we're going to get rowdy today, okay? Here we go. Number one, we celebrate, we move forward, and we get out, right? Those three things, it is simple. And each week, we're going to give you a step to take to move you forward. So so today, I want to talk about we celebrate. Yes, we celebrate. We should have done this last week because we partied so hard. Uh, But but I want to do a little... um, can I call it an exercise? Because that's what it's going to be. In fact, I want us to, to, to grasp the understanding of what we're about to read in Scripture. So, so let's do this exercise together. Last time you'll have to stand. Would you all stand with me for just a minute? This is going to be fun, I promise. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to think back this week uh, to, to a moment in your week where, where God blessed you uh, we, we might just say this. Uh, if you're not all that Christian, we're totally cool with that. Just think back to a moment that you're thankful for, right? I want you to think about that moment, right? And, and in about three seconds, uh, I want you to celebrate that. And we're going to play a song that you will all recognize. And it will move you in a way that causes you to celebrate. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, just follow me. So, so picture it in your brain. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful that I got to see my nieces this weekend during a birthday party. They are so precious and so amazing, and I'm just grateful for them, and it was great. All right, Ron, cue it up. Let's go. Come on, bring it up. Here we go. Oh, yeah. You guys ready for this? You know this song. You know what to do. Here we go. Oh, yeah. You better be jumping. Come on, let's go. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. Let's go. Come on. They're not getting it. Everybody better should be jumping. Come on now. All right. All right, Ron. Too much for him. I get it. Too much. All right. You, you think I'm joking, but, but as we dive in today into Scripture, it seems funny. It seems weird. Some of you are like, this is sacrilegious. I'm leaving. Hey, I'm going to let you know. You watch what we see in Scripture today. Ready? Acts 2. Whew, I'm out of breath. 2, 46 through 47. Here we go. It says this. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple. A daily discipline of worship in the temple. Followed by meals. Everybody love a good meal, don't they? Every meal, check this out. Every meal was a celebration. It was exuberant. It was joyful as they praised God for the blessings that he continued to pour in their lives. They were exuberant. They were joyful. They were celebrating. People in general, I love this, people in general liked what they saw. Um, I often wonder, can I I just ask this question? I often wonder if people like in general what they see about the church. I, I often wonder if people like in general what they see about people who claim faith over their lives. At the table, I hope you like what you see. Every day, their number grew as God added to those who were saved. Let's pray. God, we're so grateful for this time. We can't wait to dive in. Uh, We're excited for what you want to say and how you want to speak to us. I pray that your word would be evident and it would move our hearts. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray this. Amen. 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 You can be seated. 
Oh, man. Some of you jumped around. Some of you just ignored me. That's okay. Too cool for school. Here we go. So if, you're, if, if it's your first time here or you're new to church or you're new to faith or you're new to the Bible, it feels like I'm always new to the Bible because I'm always learning something new. I don't, I, listen, I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know a lot. I'm still learning. So join the party. But one thing I want you to understand is that in the book of Acts, it literally is, is about the characteristics. It's about the identity. It's about the movement. Literally, it is about the acts of people who decided that the life of Jesus was so compelling and so unbelievable, yet so true that it was worth following. And what I love about these people is is the thing that began to define them as, as, as this movement began to gain momentum was this word, celebration. Celebration. And in fact, um, I love this. This was not your grandma's church, but your grandma would want to go to this church. It was exciting. There was joy. There was gratefulness. There was passion. Um, in fact, I love uh, earlier on in Acts, it talks about this, that, that, that when, when people saw what was happening within this movement, uh, they claimed that they were drunk. <laughs> I mean, that is a party. Hello. They weren't drunk, but they just looked like they were drunk. That's how God's spirit works in people's lives and in their souls. When when he begins to move, we look like nut jobs. And so I want you to understand this, that, 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 that if people follow Jesus, they are defined by celebration. If people follow Jesus, they are defined by celebration. But I need you to understand that that celebration always has context. And I need you to know this today, right? That that the people who were gathering weren't gathering on their own. They were just hanging out randomly. It it says that there was a context, there was a place. And what I need you to understand this morning, and this is so, so important, is that church, the church was essential for celebration. This wasn't a solo sport. They weren't doing it on their own. They didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's insider language for, I don't need everyone else. I just need me and Jesus. No, no, no. See, see, they understood that the church was essential for celebration. It was the only way that they could gather. And so I need you, I need you to get this. Like, you cannot have church without celebration. And you cannot have celebration without the church. Let, let's think about it this way because I'm in birthday mode. You ever ever had a birthday party for yourself? No, like the words birthday party and self all alone do not go together. Like like if I just put on a little hat, I wish I had a hat, put on a little hat and and I had a little kazoo and, and I kicked on my 40th birthday, kicked my wife out, my kids out and everybody who came to my birthday party and said, you're not welcome here. I don't love you. You annoy me. Get out of my face. I wanna do this on my own. I probably would sit there and it would be the worst celebration in history because I'd blow my little kazoo, you know, and blow up my candle and realize, well, there's nothing else to do but watch something depressing on Netflix and eat a bag of potato chips. You see, it, it takes connection. It takes people. There's a context for celebration to happen in your life. And what I know is that that when we gather as a church, celebration needs to happen. And here's why. Because God is working in your life. If you leave here and God's not moving in your life in some way, man, I pray that he would begin to move. I pray that he would begin to change your life. Because when you come back, you have a story that is so powerful that you want to share it with people. You can't share it with yourself. You can't share your God story on your own with your little kazoo. Woo, God's awesome. When, when our staff gets together, we talk about you in good ways. Like we start thinking about like, oh man, did you, did you see that person? And did you hear what's happening in their life? And they were invited because of so-and-so. And next thing you know, our whole staff is telling stories about people's lives who have been changed. And guess what? It's like fire, man. We can't help it, but we just keep celebrating and we keep talking and we get fired up and it's so motivating. And that's why we come to church. You see, church is essential for celebration. If you're doing it on your own, <laughs> you're doing it all wrong. You need this place. You need this place to to help you, to help you see what's in your life that's good. 
And, and so this morning, I just want to acknowledge a problem. Can, can we just acknowledge this for just a second? I, I know it's not going to be obvious or it will be obvious to you, but, but I'm just going to have to say it. If church is essential for celebration, we have been conditioned to believe that church is unessential. It got really heavy in here. Everybody just take a breath. Okay. In fact, um, when I was writing this message, I had this, sometimes I get these ideas. And I don't know if they're really great ideas, but I had this idea. And I was like, instead of just really beating people over the face, I was like, let's have some fun with this. So I got this idea, and I just started laughing, and the more I wrote, the more I laughed, and the more I laughed, the more I wrote, and it just, like, fed upon itself, and so you're going to get today what I wrote. And Janelle says, I don't think this is a good idea, and I said, it's the one time I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> she said, "Hun, there is so much sarcasm in this, and I said, I know, that's what makes it funny. <laughs> so uh, I was asking the team, how can we make this light, and... Um, the only way that I can do this is by, by talking in my stewardess voice because it's a presentation. But before I get to that, let me just say this. Uh, we're going to do something new. In fact, we're going to plant a new church. I'm so excited about it. The table's going to plant a new church. We already have plans. We already have about 100 people who are signed up to do it. And here's the best part. You don't even have to, to give out invite cards to this church. I'm so stoked. In fact, here's what I know. Um, I think we're going to not just be the biggest church in the city. We're going to be the biggest church in the world. Listen, Craig Rochelle, you're my buddy. I love you. I watch you every week. I listen to all your leadership podcasts, but we're coming for life church. We're going to be bigger than you. I'm going to be the biggest pastor in the world, and I'm not going to have to lift a finger. You ready for this? All right, let me put on my stewardess face. Here we go. This is a pitch. I made this pitch. I worked on it. I hope it's good. All right, come on. I'll try to get through it without laughing. Y'all ready? Here we go. Let me practice for... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. All right, is that good? Is that okay? All right, here we go. We want to welcome you to Unessential Church. We love Essential Church. Uh, Our mission is here is to stay home, skip church, and schedule everything possible. Why is Unessential Church the best church in the world? Because it's about building your world. We're not going to ask you to give. We're not going to ask you to attend. We're not even going to ask you to show up, help somebody, serve somebody, or get invested in somebody's life. Why would you want to do that? (laughs) What we love about Unessential is this, is that we want you to take your next best step or no step at all. That really is the best step. So the next step that you can take at Unessential is to make sure that you schedule your favorite football team that is absolutely terrible every Sunday. Why? Because it will develop no meaning or purpose in your life and you will sat for three and a half hours doing nothing. Your next step, yeah, that's right, thank you. Your next step at Unessential Church is to make sure that your kid, who will never be a professional athlete, schedules everything on Sunday. Make sure that they fill up your schedule with soccer and dance and baseball and make sure you're never here. And on the off chance on the off chance that you have nothing going on. Your next step is to make sure that you have a handful of excuses. My favorite is, "Mm, my kids ate my shoes. My baby's diaper was dirty. But my favorite of all is, it's just not essential. Welcome to Essential Church. (laughs) What do you think? You like it? I love that. I would just go to that church because of the logo. It's so good. Unessential church. Welcome to Unessential church. That's kind of funny, isn't it? But it's also funny because we know it's true, right? We, we, we know it's true. It's just part of our lives. Like, we, we can't help it. And, and I, want you to, I want you to notice, I want to go back to Scripture. For, I got to get back into preaching mode. That was a little bit crazy. I want to go back to the Scripture, and it says this in Acts. It says, they followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple. It says there was a daily discipline. In other words, it was scheduled. There was repetition that was taking place every single day. And when I walk away and I look at what the church was doing early on, what I know is this, is that they scheduled what they valued. They scheduled what they valued. By the way, you you do this every single day. When you begin to create your calendar and what's going to happen throughout the week, you schedule 
what you value. In fact, I teach our leadership team this. When you begin to set your week, when I meet one-on-one with people, I say, schedule what you value. Because if you don't schedule it, something else will take priority. And what I know is that when you begin to schedule what you value, and when you begin to put repetition, repetition into the things that you schedule, guess what? The value of that begins to increase. Are you with me on this? Let let me put it another way. Uh, Your future is determined by the amount of repetitions that you put into it. So so let me me say it this way. Um, If I want to shoot free throws, if I want to become an amazing free throw shooter, but I never shoot a free throw, I will end up like Shaquille O'Neal. It would end in disappointment. If I desire to be healthy in my life and I want to make sure that I'm fit and taking care of myself so that way I can live a long life, yet I don't get in the repetition, the repetition of putting good foods into my body and going to the gym, guess what? It's going to end in disappointment. If you desire patience in your life, yet you never put yourself in situations where you can practice patience, I've never met anybody who is grateful for the situations where they get to practice patience. But, but yet, we can, we can want patience, we desire patience, but if we aren't in the repetition of putting ourselves in places where that has to happen, it ends in disappointment. And I want you to know this about your faith. Faith without repetition doesn't end in celebration. Faith without repetition ends in disappointment. You see, what I know is that that there are moments in your life where doubt and disappointment about your faith begin to creep in. And I would just want to say to you, just just look back at the repetition for just a moment. If you have doubts about God, you have questions, those are perfectly normal. But when you begin to, to get out of the repetition, the value begins to decrease. And what you've gained over time is lost. All right. One more example. Can, Zach, will you help me get my whiteboard out today? My whiteboard over there. Let, let me give you one more example. I think this will help. Uh, we have any math whiz people out here? Because I'm not a math whiz. We got any math whiz people? Raise your hand. Okay, nobody's a math whiz. I get one hand out here today. All right, here we go. We're talking about value decreasing without repetition. So let's just put it this way. Let's say every morning you get up at 6.30 a.m. It is the best time, hands down. Nobody got that. That's so good. Get it? Both hands are down at the, okay. Anyway, we're on digital. Okay. All right, 6.30 a.m. Here we go. Let's say you get up at 6.30 a.m. and you decide that you're going to I don't know how to invest. That's a penny. That's, um, that's it's, uh, Mr. Washington there. That's supposed to be a penny. Um, Lincoln, whoever. You get up here and do this, all right? Come on. <laughs> Lincoln, thank you very much. Th- I'm not a history buff. I'm just the theology buff. Looks like Lincoln. All right, so let's say you get up at 6.30 every morning, and you decide that you're going to invest that penny, one penny, every day into your investment account. All right? I do know that is a dollar sign, okay? Every morning, 6.30 a.m., you get up and you put a penny from your piggy bank into your investment account. Now, if you did a penny every single day... For 10,000 days, how much money would you have? Now, how many, how many dollars would you have? $100. Thanks, Phil. Told you we got some math whizzes in here. $100, right? Now, now think about that. 10,000 days of investing, repetition, 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 of putting pennies into your investment account. You get to $100, and you're like, I think I'm ready to invest into a stock. And so you divide, decide to put it into a stock. And, 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 and so you put it in the stock, and guess what? Every day, you get up at 6.30 a.m., and you watch it do this, right? You, you see it begin to grow. And guess what? Let's say 
because you got up and you watched it and you were investing in it, it grew by 50%. 50%. How much money would you have? 150. Thank you very much. So you have $150. And let's say you, again, 10,000 days, repetition, repetition, repetition. And one day you just decided, I don't really care anymore. I just don't want to go today. I don't want to get up. I don't want to get online. I don't want to check the account. It's probably doing good. And, and let's just say this, that in that one day that you didn't get up, that you didn't show up, it decreased by 33%. Some of you are like, hey, that's just 33%. I still got the other 15% to go or 18% to go. Hey, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. 17, whatever it is, 17% to go. I'm good. I'm good. And, and think about this. A 33% decrease on $150 is guess what? 50 bucks. Meaning this. After 10,000 days of investing penny, repetition, Repetition, repetition. You have all these gains. And in one day, it doesn't even have to be a 50% decrease, only a 33% decrease. You've lost everything you've gained. And I want you to know that faith without repetition isn't a celebration. Faith without repetition ends in disappointment. You see, missing, missing one week, missing one moment of celebration where you get to thank God for what he's done in your life could cost you everything you've gained. So where do we go with this? All right, let's get, let's get George Lincoln out of here. (laughs) Some of you got that. All right. So where do we go with this? Let's, let's end this thing, yeah? I want to go back to the scripture because it's just so powerful. And, and I know some of it's like, it seems irrelevant, but it's, it's, it's not. It's, it's the story that's happening. It's the story that happens when people celebrate. Notice what happens. It says, that day, about 3,000 people took him at his word, and they were baptized, and they decided they were going to sign up. Yo, count me in. They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and the prayers. Everyone around was in awe. All those wonders and signs done through the apostles and all the believers lived in wonderful harmony, holding everything together. Each person's, I love this, they sold everything they had and each person's needs were met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home. Every meal, a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw, and people were added to their number by God daily. Here's what I know. At the table, one of the things that we will value is celebration. One of the things that we will value at the table is repetition. It means show up, be present, be faithful, be available, be teachable, be here. Because, because you never know missing one time, one time what could happen to your faith. You never know when that 33% drop is going to come. You lose a spouse. Somebody breaks up with you. You get bullied online. And at the end of the day, you're not ready for it. And when you miss a day, guess what? You can lose everything in your faith that you've gained. And so one of the ways that we do this when we come here, is celebration, is it's just acknowledging what's good. What's good in your life? I think we have that, Ron. Do we have that? What's good? Yeah. You ever have those people in your life who, they won't shut up? You say, how you doing? And they're like, man, you would not believe. I can't stand this person, and this person makes my life miserable, and I'm ready to leave and move and get out of here, and Joliet's terrible, and, you know, everybody around here is mean, and I don't know, you know, they just go on and on, wow, 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 and you're like, okay, that's enough. I've solved that problem. You know how to do that? You ask them, hey, what's good? I've had people come through the door. It's been so fun. I say, hey, what's good in your life? And they'll look at me, and they'll go, Yeah, it's great. 
you don't even have to have a conversation with them because they don't know what to say. What's good? What's good? You, you see, see, part of coming to this space is getting a, a weekly routine dose of what's good for your life. You see, what's totally different from the world is the world teaches you to be angry. They teach you to be cynical. They teach you to be distrusting of everyone around you. And what I know is it leaves you empty and unfulfilled and searching for more. And what what happens is when we miss out on the repetition, we miss out on where God is blessing us in our lives. How many of you, including me, I do this all the time. I pray a prayer. Dear God, you do this for me and I'll love you forever. I will make sure that I give up everything I've ever done. You know, like we start making all these agreements. Just answer this prayer. God answers the prayer. And five minutes later, I walk away like he never answered it. Oh, yeah. I I forgot that happened. That's unreal. I I can't believe that happened. And and see, what happens is when we gather every single Sunday, it becomes a reminder of, hey, what's good? What's good in your life? What happened this week? Where has God blessed you in your life? Because you ate 24 hours ago, you have something to celebrate. Because you have a roof over your head and heat in your house in the dead of winter, you have something to celebrate. Because you have a church that cares about you and your movement and your spiritual life. Hey, yo, you have something to celebrate. Because we have a God who has decided to speak to us through his word every single week. You have something to celebrate. Because God has decided to make himself visible through his son, Jesus. Don't tell me he's not tangible. He sent his son physically here in this moment to die for you, resurrect for you, give you new life, give you freedom and a dream and a new start. You've got something to celebrate. Come on, you can celebrate that. You can clap your hands. Don't be ashamed of it. You've got something to celebrate. And listen, if you've got nothing to celebrate, let me tell you, you should just celebrate the last breath that you just took because it's a God who loves you, who gave it to you from the very beginning. You have something to celebrate. Man, my abs are hurting. I gotta, I gotta ease up. Whew. You got something to celebrate. What's, what's good in your life? What's good? In fact, If you don't want to talk to people this week, just ask them, hey, what's good? (laughs) But, But we're going to be people who are committed to repetition. So here's your next step. Forget unessential church. Don't stay home. That's that's for boring people. That's for average people. Because you're here today, you're above average. You are. You you laugh at that, but you're not average. You're committed to this. You know that God's doing something in your life. And so here's what what I want. Listen, I'm I'm preaching to the choir. I don't need to tell you this. You're here. But maybe you have somebody in your life who needs to hear this. Share it with them. Here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to do. Schedule what you value. Schedule what you value. As a pastor, I, because I have an ego, one of the most disappointing things that I ever hear from people is that I can't make it Sunday because my kids are going to be at soccer. Because I have an ego, um, people will say things like, you know, I just, just don't have time anymore. But if I take my ego out of it, what, make, what breaks my heart and what makes me sad is that people are beginning to align their lives with something else than the God who can change it, who can make them, who can give them wholeness. And so I'll just say this, schedule what you value. And listen, I get it. You go on vacation, you have things that come up, you get sick, COVID's still a deal. I get that. Like there are weeks you can't be here. I understand that. But I love this rule. Don't miss more than one. Don't miss more than one. This is a great rule for your own life. Hey, if you're committed to getting healthy or exercising and you miss a day, that's okay. Don't miss more than one because once you begin to get to two, it becomes a habit. It's not the whole 21 thing. Throw that out the window. Once you've done it twice, it becomes a habit. So so put this time of celebration in your schedule. And last of all, I'd say this to you. I, I love in the scripture It says every day people were signing up for this Jesus movement. 
Every day, people were signing up for this Jesus movement. And I want you to know, if you feel like your life is just overwhelmed with negativity, that when you look at people, and the only thing that you can think in your brain about them is, you're an idiot. Why were you born? What was God thinking when he made you? Oh, I have those thoughts. Come on, I'm human. Like, if, if your life is overwhelmed with that, man, they, I believe that there is a God who, who is bursting at the seams to come into your life and to give you purpose and freedom, joy, and jump around. Celebration. Yeah? Oh, I love this. I love this. This is what God gives us. So this morning, I want to invite you into that. I want you, I want you to sign up today. I want you to join the team. I want you to be part of the movement. I want you to be part of a group of collective individuals who have decided that the mission is so important that they're going to continue to follow, and they're going to gather every single week. Be part of it. It'll change your life. And so, and so I, I just want to say this. In this moment, it's not a special prayer. It's just you talking to God, saying, God, today, I want to cross the line of faith. Today, God, I decide to give you my life. Today, I want you to take everything inside of me that's lost, searching, broken, and hurting. And I want you to make it whole. Forgive my past. Forgive me for the wrong. But give me new life. You say that in this moment. And today your life is changed. Today your life is changed. If this message challenged you and moved you forward, personally or in faith, we encourage you to share it with someone who needs a message of hope today. And if you're interested or looking for ways to partner with us in our mission here at The Table, head on over to thetablejoliet.org for more information.